Yo, what happened in episode four? Episode four? Oh. <laughs> that was a riveting episode. So it's October 31st, Halloween, my birthday. I'm 40, 4-0 today. I feel like I'm 23. Um, we're working on replacing the rocker panels. Mark and his brilliance is working on tearing out the old rockers. Uh, and so... He's actually the star of the show, not me. all that rust. That's 50 years of rust, Sammy. Oh, look at this. Wow, that's super thin. So this truss has seen salt. This has been replaced before. Yeah, they've just done a bottom of the eye post because there was a weld there. So they put a patch on this, bit, uh, on this bit here. So this might have seen overseas. Three years ago, I went to Spain. I was working for a Spanish car company there, which is a part of the Volkswagen Group. And then the work sort of dried up a little bit. So then I went to Germany, and then I spent uh, a, nearly a year in China with Volkswagen. We initially did not expect him to do any of this. He came over, what, maybe two months ago, three months ago? Yeah, three months ago. We started looking at the cab and he goes, I, I want to marry, I, I'll do that. But yeah, you right have now, that responsibility to make sure that uh, this really you know. pans out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They can't do this by machine. This is all still got to be done by hand. Uh -huh. Yeah, we got to get all this gnarly yep. stuff. Cool. There's a weld underneath there, and these yeah. little welds that all okay. needs cleaning up. I can clean that up, and I can clean these up. Yeah, and again, all this gnarly stuff. about ready to start tacking on the new rocker panel on the passenger side. So we're getting ready to call Spence, the core 4x4, in about five minutes, and um, he couldn't make it here this last weekend for various reasons, but we're gonna do a FaceTime call with him and go over the whole four link and make sure that we're not missing something, and uh, hopefully that conversation goes well. Earth to Spence, base to, base to Spence, reduce base to core 4x4. Can you see me okay? Yeah. Okay. You're blurry, but I can see ya. Well, I look better when I'm blurry. Can you see the truck? Oh, yeah. This bar right here is just kind of where I think the drive line's gonna be. 
and I was thinking essentially the upper would come to a spot in the frame somewhere in here. How long do you think these bars should be? I wouldn't go crazy long. Um, crazy long being like six foot bars. Let's say they're 40. Two inches. So that's a lot. That's longer than anything we've done, even for like long arm kids. Our long arm kids, like 30 inches eye to eye, but it's got a shorter wheelbase. So yeah, 45 is about right for that. So, truck. how far away are you from having drivetrain in? We're mocking up and then pulling everything out, uh, obviously, to build and stuff. But I think we'll probably be mocked up in maybe two weeks. We'll, we'll do another FaceTime. Yeah, or I can come out if everything's not crazy. Okay. All right, thanks, Vince. Yeah, let me know if you have any questions or anything. All right, will do. Appreciate it. Have a good afternoon. Yeah, you too. Ciao. All right, so just got off the phone with Core 4x4. Spence Tram, you're a stud. Uh, I don't think we were missing anything. He provided some insight. He thought that we had kind of covered all of our bases. Good call. Yeah, it's awesome. One step closer. So, while Brandon's been out in the shop, I have been working on the bed design, and I know we already introduced this, but wanted to show some progress. Since starting this, I've decided that I might want to do an animated intro for this series. Today I made the shock, the possibly famous shock that's gonna fly by the screen. <laughs> um, we're getting really, if not already, we're darn close to being able to actually start cutting some of this steel. I have all the inside, I guess, in, all, all the bed framing, all the, the bones for the bed all done, these uh, black and gray water tanks, fuel tanks. I feel like we're just about there. I got the flooring today, and now I'm just going to go through and make sure that all the gussets and the bed mount where it'll actually bolt down to the frame. I'm gonna make sure that we have a spot to bolt everything through. I can look here and go up on top and it looks like right there we can bolt that one and I just need to make sure that everywhere that we'll be bolting the bed to the frame is accessible. It's pretty cool we were able to figure out some some of our suspension geometry and figure out how big our wheel wells need to be. Uh, just by rotating the axle up and down. Um, spent a lot of time on the tutorial learning how to model these tires. Uh, not that there's any engineering use for that, but if we're doing the animated intro, then I wanted them to look good. Brandon doesn't know we're doing that yet. I'm kind of keeping it a secret until, uh, until I know it's gonna work out well. So maybe you've seen that intro. Maybe it's not the intro. We'll see. So we got the engine in place, roughly speaking, and blocked up and set where it's close. Uh, but everything gets built off the transfer case. So the transfer case is a, is a known value. It sits where it sits. Um, and we'll build everything from the transfer case forward. Uh, we're gonna get this sat inside the frame. Um, so we can then hopefully in the next couple of days put this tranny in there and start mocking everything up forward. So now we're in the mock-up phase, and um, now, yeah, well now we're mocking up the drivetrain. These two cross members had to move because the transfer case was, was originally up here. Luckily these two cross members just unbolt 
and we slid it back to where we think it roughly goes. Uh, we have to mock up this mount, redrill holes, put this mount back in. So we'll get this exactly where we think it needs to go, and then we'll start marking up. Once the transmission's in, it's a divorce transfer case, so we have a little bit of slot, but it, luckily we've got a drive line that we'll have built between the two. And then transmission forward, and then the block. And it's pretty much where it goes, plus or minus an inch or two up or down, left or right. So with any luck, in the next week, we'll have this all done, mocked up, and then engine mounts built for front and the new cross member, or cross member for the front and the mounts for the rear. So we're making progress. So yesterday we got our SAE2 bell housing for the Cummins to marry up the uh, Eaton Fuller tranny. And it will sit on here like so. As you can see the motor mounts or the engine mounts are right here. We're gonna create a custom mount that comes down and bolts onto the frame. We're talking to Energy Suspension right now about different bushings and different applications. We'll clean this up a little bit. It's gonna eventually go to powder coat or sandblast. Start mocking this up. Dang it. I don't think that'll work anymore, Roger. It's numero tres. So there are two ways to go about this. You could drill this all the way through and weaken the walls and they'll come out a little easier that way. These ones aren't as difficult, so I just get a hole started big enough for my punch so my punch won't fly all around. These ones all are coming out pretty easily. A little known fact, but with all these metal shavings, you're going to want to make sure you properly dispose of them. If you're just gonna blow them around into the air and they happen to settle on your vehicle, they will rust and leave rust spots. The shock mount's off, the original motor mount, engine mount is off. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit, paint it so it doesn't start to rust up. Probably not really necessary to paint this because we're gonna sandblast the whole thing and repaint it, but I don't like watching this thing just get all surface rusted out. So. We're gonna tap out the holes on the um, flywheel housing and mount it. Start looking at what we're gonna do for motor mounts. Engine mounts, engine mounts. Obviously not new. It will look new when we're done. What I wanna go through is clean up all these holes. A die set here, and these holes are 10 by 1.5 by 40. We have a 10 by 1.5 right here, and we're just gonna could get a bottoming cap, but this, I've tried it on one already, and this is deep enough. And I can feel crud in there. So it's good to run these, run this through and just clean them up. Okay, they're clean. Put this bad boy on. This is just for mock-up, so this is not, and this isn't even the block that we're using. This is not the block that's being built. Nobody makes custom fenders and sliders for the deuce. I bet Nemesis Industries could do it. Yeah, but for 13,000 pounds? Really? Yeah. They're USA made and they have their own legit shop. Okay, Nemesis it is. Don't worry, rocker panel. So for any of you watching this that want to do the same thing, and you have an SAE2 bell housing, and you're trying to marry up to a 5.9, it's Cummins Part. I spent seriously 30 hours researching this, so I'll save you the time. It's Cummins Part Number 3931716. That's the flywheel housing you want, right there. That'll save you a bunch of time. 3931716. Now we have to design engine mounts, thousand pounds or something. 
and the transmission that we're hanging off back into this is 710 pounds. Now we'll probably end up doing some sort of a top brace for it because it's just a lot of weight. That's all hanging off of this aluminum flywheel housing. And this little mohawk piece on above my head is the drive line. Time to bring out the big gun. Big boy. Big gun. What happened? I slid, I turned it on and I went to readjust and my hand slipped and my finger went into the cutting blade. And there's gotta be some glue in so, here somewhere. I lost the blanket. Here we go, there's glue. Liquid skin, found it. Yeah, just antiseptic. put glue on me. Don't we'll clean it up first with this. I mean, you'll tell me how bad it is. I only looked at it quick. Glue freaks me out. Get All right, let me see your finger. Don't look at it. Just, just let it off. Oh. oh yeah, you got some blood going. Uh, oh, it's not so bad. Is it not? No. no. It's not? It's cut, but it's not so bad. Yeah. Okay, we've almost stopped the bleeding. Pull it up. Okay, almost done. Okay, keep it up, keep it up. We'll be right back after these unscheduled messages. If you didn't know, we have an online store. And we sell a lot of the gear we use. And merch too. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, we'll get that order right out to you. But really we're a small company. We created the online store to help fuel our passion. So head over to our website, trailbendersoverland.com. That's nuts. That's really close. Closer. Look at that. I like that. I like that. I like that. I really like that. I think that's, I think we're good. Okay, so, okay. So, one finger, two finger, three finger, four. I've got all my fingers and toes cut no more. I don't know how funny that was. I'm wearing my boots. These are uh, standard issue shop. 
boots and I'm wearing my standard issue shop gloves. I'm pretty good, no blood. But uh, Dylan here. I was wearing my standard issue gloves. This, this glove right here. All, all organic, non-GMO. And then he decided to perform surgery on his index finger there with the grinder and the cutting wheel. He filleted it open. I sure did. And uh, he's trying to keep it above his heart right now because it hurts. It goes ba bum ba We have blood all over the shop floor on our clothing and our person trying to save his life. Thank you, What If Survival, for having an awesome uh, first aid kit. And so he's sort of gonna be like half a man down for a while. We made good progress in the shop regardless. Fixed up the transmission onto the engine and we've got it centered in here, I think where it needs to go. Over the next week, we'll be able to fabricate some engine mounts and uh, start firming this thing up. But today was a good day. So and, and I got zero cutting done cleaning up the cap. Apparently there's a correlation. Good progress in the shop, blood, spillage from Dylan. <laughs> How about some knuckles with the right hand? Right, right hand. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Left yep. hand. All right. See you tomorrow. It's November 20th. The drivetrain is well, a big chunk of it is in here. What we need to do next is head over to Oceanside Drive Line. They'll tell us, you know, how long the this drive line needs to be between the transmission and transfer case. The original one compressed is 12 inches. This is almost 14, so we're hoping that's okay. They'll tell us if that needs to change. We have a compound angle that goes down and to the left, down and to the right. And they're gonna tell us exactly what we need to do to make that work. This is a 1710 yoke and we need something that will marry up to this or I guess convert to the, to the T case and hopefully also accommodate for our 1200 pounds of torque. And this flange here can accept anywhere from a 1410 up to a 1550. So let's head over there. Okay, we're at Oceanside Drive and we're gonna figure out what our what we gotta do to the drive lines and yokes and mirroring all up. So we're gonna talk to Jeff. This is Mr. Expert and we're gonna figure out what we're doing. Right now we've got a 1710 yoke coming out of the back of the, the tranny. Huh? Marrying up with this. Quarter, three quarter, three quarter. This is a quarter. Fifteen. Very old school, kind of discontinued, so hard to find any of that. The pilots were the same. There's full circle. Pilot can match this fine. So this is a bit more common to find. Once you guys get back, you know, to the point where you can put the wheels on, put the differentials in it, you get, you know, your angles dialed in and whatnot, then we'll come out there and we'll kind of look at some of that with you and we'll, we'll go forward with a, a, another plan as far as like getting the right drive shaft in there. Awesome, Jeff. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. You don't have to. A little finger update. Aside from being extremely frustrated at myself still, it hurts. Pretty much everything I do hurts, but uh, you know, figuring out how to do things one-handed, deal with it, I guess. This will probably haunt me for the next few months, so I'll be relying on the guys for a lot more support. So this the 16 gauge uh, sheet metal, it's a little rusty. They said, well, you can either have it for free if you're okay with the rust, which we're sandblasting anyway, or we can order you a new sheet. I said, no, we'll take the free stuff. We got a four by eight sheet of 16 gauge for free. So that's better than paying for it. The worst part of my fingers, it's gonna slow things down just a little bit. And we're already behind, stressed out about timing. This definitely doesn't help anything. I, I was getting ready to rock, start rocking and rolling on putting the bed structure together, and I can still do it. It's just gonna be a little slower. Oceanside Driveline said we had to move the transfer case back so that our front and rear drive shafts are close to the same. They said 73 inches was too long for the back, so we're shortening it by moving the transfer case. So we're just moving the, the jack and cross members here uh, just inches at a time. We had to go back about 10 inches. And also what it does is it lengthens this uh, intermediary, intermediary? Uh, drive line from transmission to the transfer case. It lengthens it and gives us more options in terms of yokes and marrying the two. So uh, we have the room to put you back. 
and then both front and rear drive line should be about 68 inches flange to flange. And that means that hopefully we can have the exact same drive shaft front and rear. And if we carry an extra or if we break one, then they can be swapped uh, between each other. Thinking ahead. We're trying to think ahead. We're going to check the blender file. So we know exactly where the front and rear axles are going. We know we're close, but we want to know when we're exactly in the right spot. And then we can mount this thing to the frame. Yesterday, I couldn't let my hand go below my heart or my finger would start throbbing. Today, I'm right around my belly button. Okay. 40, roughly 48, just over 48 and a quarter. Um, more like 48 and 3 eighths. Okay, so 211 and 7 eighths. Uh, 48 and 3 eighths. What was it? 211. 211, 7 eighths. 48 and 3 eighths. All right, so um, how do I explain? So it's important that this output shaft or the input shaft, output shaft um, are the same angle, but that the transmission and the transfer case are offset so the drive line is not perfectly straight perfectly straight and it's um, right for a vibration so we want them offset just a little bit at least so the view joints are working and uh, so I'm raising the transmission up uh, about a three quarters of an inch over this 20 inch span 22 inch span um, and then I need to keep the same essentially one degree down uh, angle on the drivetrain um, so I've lifted up the back end a half inch which means I gotta lift up the front end enough to get that one degree slope uh, relative to the frame. And uh, so yeah, back's up and now we're gonna we're gonna raise the front end, hopefully without anything falling over. How do we bring this back end up? Well we need shifts. Got him. The bottom on some gins. Yeah. Composite something or another. But that's definitely not gonna do it. Oh, there's something there. This 45 and 360, and this arm sits up here like this. It's November 22nd, we're getting number 20. It marks this here is day five yeah, blah, blah, of my blah. finger. It's Sunday, November twenty second. Took the splint off. We're yesterday. working on the it took cap forever today. to get the band-aids off because it was stuck to the run, but finally got it off. And it's looking pretty good. We got Mark some Stumped. new wire and gas, so he can actually work today. Does that look like the right stuff? Yep. Sweet. Now Mark is cutting out a template for the floor with some cardboard to make it easy to cut the sheet metal.
Brandon took some sheet metal over to Tim Phipps, the owner of Falcon Overland, to bend this new tunnel for the cab because the new transmission and engine, everything, all that's gonna need a little extra space. And they're talking about how to go from the steeper angle that it is to the you know shallower angle that's towards the back of the cab. Floor sheet metal is prepped and ready to tack in. We drilled all the holes. We'll be welding it down through those holes. And uh, Brandon's working on some of these side pieces. We'll be back for more. We'll be back for more tomorrow. So it's, what is today's date anyway? 23rd. November 23rd. This week we're gonna make a lot of progress. Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving. Um, we're finishing out these this section. Make this outside box and then the inside. Uh, finishing up the floor, spot welding, pot welding, and then the tunnel. Hopefully by the end of the week the tunnel will be done. Floor will be done. All the sheet metal work, Mark, most of the sheet metal work will be done by the end of this week, huh? Yeah. Thank you, Mark. And then body work. Almost done with these panels, and I'm a little OCD, so I'm sound deadening everything. And uh, I'm gonna drill some holes for pot welds. And we're about ready to install this. the back transmission mount bolt holes and the transmission we bought refurbished the bolts were snapped off in there so we're tapping and drilling them out yay so just thinking out loud here how many more hours do you think that it's gonna add to the build having dull blades <laughs> all right we'll get new blades and need new gloves too hey they are, these these ones are just breaking in they? caught on fire broken knuckle yeah they don't protect the hand much but you look good. <laughs>